Welcome. I am Michael Gaucher and we are exploring software development with .NET on a low-end computer with an Intel Pentium processor and four gigabytes of RAM. What I'm going to present today is uh, creating a window in Microsoft Visual Studio. And we're gonna use a framework called WPF. Uh, that stands for Windows Presentation Foundation. Windows Presentation Foundation is a tool that allows you to build GUI user interface visual applications. Some people call it GUI, some people call it UI. Uh, whatever the name is or abbreviation that you wanna use, it's a way of presenting information visually in a visual operating system, right? And so WPF, what that does is it gives you the ability to do that in a way where the graphics, the fonts, the layout, the spacing, all of that is done in a very um, pleasing, refined, and high fidelity type of way. There are many ways to make visual applications, and on Windows, one of those under .NET is Windows Forms. Windows Forms, you could say, is an automation of GDI, Graphics Device Interface. And Graphics Device Interface is part of the Win32 API. What that means is um, you can create buttons, borders, um, text fields, all of this sort of thing in a, in a way that where the program looks the way they did in the late 1980s, in, the, in a large part of the 1990s, where it's pretty much uh, the background of the program, the, the color background is gray. It's like this, this, uh, this medium gray tone and the buttons are gray. Uh, there might be a little color here or there, that sort of thing. And so when WPF came along, uh, I believe it came along around 2006, I think it might have been 2006. Um, it was more of an automation of DirectX. And so DirectX is a video game programming framework and WPF allows you to apply that in an indirect way for business, for business software, business applications and programs running on Windows. And what that does is it allows you to have much greater control over transparent buttons or buttons that have a mix of transparency and shadows and gradients and that sort of thing. And, you know, that's the aesthetic aspect, the, the visual form over function aspect of w, WPF. But it also uh, departs from Windows Forms and the earlier uh, programming toolkits for building visual applications by allowing you to define the layout and the visual part using an XML language that Microsoft calls XAML. XAML resembles um, a, another uh, XML language that um, Adobe had produced for ActionScript uh, for Adobe Flash applications. And I forgot what that, um, that language was called, but uh, WPF, basically uh, looks the same way. I, I'm not saying that they copied that, not at all, not at all, because you know the idea of markup for a user interface, that is um, as old as HTML. And so, um, and it's even older than that, but um, HTML is pretty much the um, example of what you can do when you use a markup language, a text-based markup language, and you use it to describe your layout. And so, um, but not everybody likes to define their layout, define their screens with, um, with, with markup language. Um, there are many people who still like to write the code and go directly to the code for uh, the visual objects, the visual representations. And so that's more of where I'm going with this example is that, um, the, the, the actual codes you can write for the equivalent XAML um, provides, provides many benefits. And I'm going to establish the parameters of the window, basically what are the four corners and, 
you know, what's the initial size of the window and that sort of thing. I'll do that in XAML and Visual Studio will automate 99% of that. And that's great. And so we're gonna use Visual Studio to uh, produce this window. And what is a window? A window is a square region in which visual information can exist and be presented to the person that is using that software application. And a window is also that region, that square or rectangular region where input can occur. So it it's it's, can be a two-way process. You have visual information that's output, and then you have clicks and touches and taps and scrolls and all that sort of thing as input, uh, typing, typing text into text fields. And so that's what a window allows us to do is to make that process occur. And so the, the old, ultimate example here of what we're building is a RSS reader. A RSS reader allows you to pull feeds from different websites. And I explained that in a little bit more detail in an earlier video. And so I'm going to build a RSS reader application, essentially the same application that I built in the Linux environment using different tools like C++, C, uh, XML libraries from GNU, and curl and SQLite. But here I'm going to use Microsoft Visual Studio and I'm going to use C Sharp programming language. C Sharp is totally different from C++. They can appear similar in some ways because they both use semicolons and, um, and, and, and braces, right? But um, some of the syntax, syntax similarities are, are extremely misleading. And so I'm using a, an entirely different language with um, entirely different uh, semantics. And I'm going to use a, a API and SDK that is going to allow me to materialize a, a graphical window and put functionality and logic and uh, data into this region so that it has a living existence. And so I think that when you use software code to define a, a graphical user interface, as opposed to declaring it or using a declarative approach and declaring it with tags. And I totally get the benefit of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In that, in that way, when it comes to web development, totally, I totally get that, even though what I'm about to say would apply there as well, that when you're using APIs directly and you're automating the production of a user interface using software code and doing it in an imperative way or even a functional language, that you attain greater control over that process such that you can achieve functionalities, um, interaction patterns, and uh, steps and procedures in a way that is um, much better, much richer than the shortcuts that are available in markup language. And so I don't ascribe programmability to markup language. And that may be a minority view, but I don't see SQL, HTML, and XAML as programming languages. And I know that you can combine HTML and CSS to achieve Turing completeness, but the actual practice of building software and creating software that changes the behavior of the computer that allows you control to uh, greater or lesser degrees, I think that requires a little bit more elaboration in a different forum for us to really understand what is actual programming what, in versus what is, um, when are you taking advantage of uh, computational conveniences that take you on the cusp of programming, but it's not exactly the same thing. And so we're building this RSS reader program using WPF, Visual Studio, and SQL Server. And we're gonna start with defining a window. On GitHub, we see that all the files that we created earlier is listed in the repository and it matches the file system. 
we see the project directory for the WPF UI and we see all the other files associated with it. Let's take a brief moment to understand what an RSS feed is. An RSS feed, as I described in my main introduction video uh, from yesterday, is a data stream that we can use to show headlines and then when you interact with a headline, you can see the actual article that goes with that headline. And so that's, in a nutshell, essentially what we're dealing with. And so headlines, articles, the article content, um, we're going to make that a reality through this process. But first, we have to deal with the data. The data that we have in SQLite it would be very convenient in this process to move that into SQL Server. Once we have it in SQL Server, we can take advantage of SQL's facilities for store procedures, views, the visual tools that allow us to interact with that data and use that to enhance the software application in the way that it interacts with data and brings that into the software program. Microsoft Visual Studio set up a window when it generated the WPF project. If I click the button that looks like a Sony Walkman or iPod Shuffle Play button sitting at the top center of the screen, Visual Studio will compile the program. Then Visual Studio will launch the program and what will result is a window. When I click on mainwindow.xaml, I see an approximate visual representation of the window, followed by the XAML markup that describes the window. I've reorganized Visual Studio so that I only see the XAML markup. I don't need the design representation. And in this process, we would rather deal with C-sharp code first and foremost, then XAML if necessary, and then the visual representation in rare instances that we need to tweak something through that mechanism. Visually editing the window in this case is irrelevant given that we will direct the program primarily through code. Notice that the first layout element in the XAML is a grid. You'll see that on line 9 through 11. I'm going to change that to a stack panel in a minute, but first let's make changes to the main window and so size to content is set to manual which is what we want that's going to give maximum flexibility in the sizing of the window so definitely want that we want to add an event handler the event handler is going to allow us to tap in to the window I also want to set the title for the window um, to Gaucher RSS. You'll notice that IntelliSense is fully active here and making suggestions on what we need to do. I'm going to accept the default suggestion for the initialized event and Visual Studio will generate a window underscore initialized function or method as you were um, that we can tap into. And so there I am on line 11, uh, changing uh, from grid to stack panel. And so um, this is going to be the root element that will allow us to connect visual widgets to the main window. And we're doing all of this in XAML. And we're doing the minimum that we need to do from XAML to affect code generation and to affect uh, control over the window. We don't need XAML. We could have easily have created this project with just pure code and no XAML at all. I've done that in professional projects and done that across dozens of software applications in a professional environment. But in this example, that is unnecessary, and the minimal XAML approach will suffice as a bootstrap for the graphical user interface application. You'll see on line 28, 
the, we, we have the definition for a uh, window underscore initialize. This is the main function that uh, will give us interactivity or kick off interactivity in our in our program uh, from the standpoint of what we imbue into the program to affect interactivity. And so for now, I put a little comment marker there so that um, I know to go back there. And um, I want to add a button to this window. Something simple to start off this process and to um, test out the project configuration to make sure WPF, uh, the, the WPF um, um, framework doesn't have any issues. Because sometimes you can have issues in a project, and this should never happen when you're generating a project, but there's that, that one in a million uh, chance that something, um, there's a snag in the project configuration, even though it's been auto-generated dozens of times on the same computer. Or you may have made changes to a project um, before you started writing code, and um, there's an issue there. So anyway... Uh, this will allow us to test our WPF project and test our window. And so I've declared a button on line 22, 23. And I'm going to um, define this button on line 34. And I'm just going to put a label on it called reader. The button isn't going to do anything. It's just a button. It's just a visual object that we want to see on the window. And so um, the stack panel is where that button would go. And we can use code to put that button inside that stack panel. But we need a way to refer to the stack panel. So I'm going to give it a name. And by giving it a name, Visual Studio will generate the actual stack panel um, object, the stack panel in object instance, right, that we can use to link the button to the window by way of this layout, this layout manager. I like the term layout manager. Um, that comes from Java. You know, I think Java had it right when they um, referred to these as layout managers. But that's essentially what this is. I'm going to set the field modifier to internal because this stack panel is not going to uh, be accessed outside of the generated assembly, generated executable. And now that we have a name for the stack panel, we can use it, the various properties and methods functions on this object to access it and inject this button, this visual object or what would call the visual element in WPF parlance into the stack panel. So let's run the project. I'm going to press um, F5, right? Uh, you can press Control Shift B to build the project to see if there's any coding errors, right? And so, um, but if you do F5, it'll build and then run the, the uh, application. And so there we see we have a button, we have it uh, on the in the window and WPF is looking good at this point so everything is in place exactly the way we need it to begin building a RSS reader application.